So I'd like to start off with us just uh, giving each other a huge round of applause for a really successful Whalen Symposium. I've been a part of the Whalen Symposium since 2011, and I just feel like every year it gets bigger and better, and I'm just so thrilled with the way this whole day has turned out. Um, there are a few people I would like to thank for making this a spectacular Whalen Symposium. A big thank you to the student presenters and their faculty mentors. Uh, yeah. <laughs> whose hard work and dedication could be seen in a wide array of research, scholarship, and creativity. Thank you to Madison Mangano and, and Luke Keller, who gave such a wonderful keynote presentation. <laughs> and thank you to all of the volunteers, um, who were judges, moderators, timekeepers, who worked the tables, and of course, for everyone who did the behind the scenes work at Whalen. A huge thank you to the Whalen Steering Committee for your hard work in leading up to today's event. And a very special thank you to the four students on the Steering Committee who put an incredible amount of time into preparing for today. So that's Anna Gardner, Drew Olkowski, Andres Garcias, and Jacob Dow. <laughs> And finally, I'd like to thank Marianne Taylor. Marianne, you are in here. She's at the back. Just raise your hand. This woman <laughs> is incredible. Um, the symposium could not happen without her. Every single part of this day has been shaped, organized, and masterfully rendered by Marianne Taylor, and we owe her. <laughs> Now I'd like to introduce Provost Ben Rifkin. Okay, I have to start with um, another thank you to Marianne. Um, Marianne, your spirit has touched every aspect of this, of this symposium and none of it would be possible without you, your professionalism, your dedication, your good cheer, and your extraordinary attention to the big picture and to the infinite, and this is um, especially with regard to the fact that we had math presentations today, the infinite number of details. So one more round of applause for Marianne. So as many of you know, um, this is my first year at Ithaca College, so this is my first Whalen Symposium. And I have to tell you, this was my best day at Ithaca College all year. <laughs> to witness the luster of student inquiry in the extraordinary breadth of disciplines represented by our five schools and the six themes of our integrative core curriculum is to understand in the most profound way the talent, the intellect, and the creative spirit of our students and the faculty who mentor them. One more round of applause for our student participants and our faculty mentors. I am particularly proud of our students today because they demonstrated publicly that they are at the superior level of performance in their chosen fields. And I mean that in a very, very specific way. As some of you may have heard, I am a professor of Russian. Has that come up? Well, um, maybe not all of you know that my research area is in the fields of applied linguistics and foreign language education. And in my field, we use an internationally recognized system of performance benchmarks called the proficiency guidelines to describe an individual's ability to communicate in a given language. The proficiency guidelines consist of descriptors of performance at four major levels and sub-levels within them for the four modalities of human communication, listening, reading, writing, and speaking. And just as an aside, um, scholars are working on benchmarks um, for sign languages as well. I'd like to share with you for a moment a bird's eye view of the proficiency guidelines for speaking in order to compare them with the performances that I observe today. 
At the novice level, speakers are unable to communicate autonomously because they speak only in memorized words and phrases and depend on substantial help from extremely sympathetic native speakers to communicate even the most basic ideas, and even so, they struggle and often fail. They may know the names of colors or days of the week, but they can't ask a question or answer one, except for questions and answers they have memorized. At the intermediate level, speakers can communicate autonomously, but with sympathetic speakers. They speak in simple sentences and can not only answer questions, but can ask them. Even though they make a lot of mistakes, they can be understood if they are talking about predictable topics, such as my family, or the things that are immediately and physically present. Intermediate level speakers can negotiate their way through a simple and predictable communication, uh, such as ordering a meal in a restaurant. At the advanced level, speakers communicate autonomously in paragraph-length discourse consisting of complex sentences in which they can foreground important ideas. They narrate and describe in all time frames about a broad range of topics, including current events, and they can communicate their way through an unpredictable communicative situation, such as paying for a meal in a restaurant when they've left their wallets at home, which as a foreign language educator and as a provost, I don't recommend. <laughs> I do want to point out, however, that the advanced level, which I just described, is the level of language proficiency of most people who don't go to college. So if you're a native speaker and you're intellectually unimpaired and you don't go to college, this is kind of where you wind up, which doesn't have anything to do with how much human worth you have, what your dignity is, and how much we love you. That's just where you are with language. At the superior level, which is where Ithaca College Whalen Symposium participants are, <laughs> speakers communicate autonomously in extended discourse with sophisticated turns of speech without any pattern errors, narrating, describing, arguing, and hypothesizing on topics both concrete and abstract. To contrast the advanced and superior levels, I would say that an advanced level speaker could tell a story about attending a political rally for a presidential candidate, while a superior level speaker could analyze the political views of opposing candidates and speculate as to how those policies might, if implemented, would have an impact on our lives as citizens here in this country. What I observed today was students performing in their respective disciplines and ICC themes at the superior level. Students, you argued in extended discourse on abstract, on abstract topics, supporting your argument with evidence, hypothesizing and speculating about problems, designing and conducting an inquiry to explore these problems, and refuting or affirming your hypotheses on the basis of the evidence you gathered. This is the peak of excellence in mentored inquiry at Ithaca College. In the work that you displayed today, you demonstrated excellence in critical thinking, creative problem solving, collaborative work, and extremely effective communications. Many of your projects also entailed sophisticated quantitative analysis. There were a few of the math presentations that I admit I really could not follow. <laughs> you worked with partners on campus, off campus, and sometimes across the globe. You worked on inquiries focusing on civic engagement questions, intercultural analysis, ethical questions. You demonstrated that you have laid the foundation for lifelong learning by synthesizing large amounts of information and analyzing new data applying the knowledge and skills you acquired here at Ithaca College classes to novel settings and complex problems. On behalf of all the faculty, staff, and the administration of Ithaca College, I extend to you my sincere congratulations on the accomplishments that you have showcased here today. You are superior level researchers, and you make all of us, and you make me, very proud. In our college song, we sing about the towers soaring up from stone to star. Well, now I know what the stars are in that song. They are you. And you forever shine bright, not only in the sky, but in our hearts. Thank you. Thank you, Provost Rifkin. Now I'd like to introduce one of the members of our steering committee, Christina Dale.
Following Provost Rifkin, I will keep this very brief. On behalf of the steering committee, I offer congratulations to all of the student participants and faculty sponsors for an invigorating day of research. It was inspirational to see the outcomes of the individual studies, group projects, and student-faculty collaborations presented this year. The inspiration began this morning during the keynote presentation by Madison Mangano and Luke Keller, where we all became, if only for the most transient of moments, astrophysicists. And as a theater historian, it was really transient for me. <laughs> it is something that Dr. Keller said this morning that I would like to briefly expand upon here. Within the field of spectral sonification, it is fundamental for researchers to listen to their data. That's what he said, listening to their data. However, this seemingly basic concept is not for scientists alone and extends to every discipline and area of research and education. Data, the plural of datum, is a body of information. As individual students and educators, we are all datum, lone propositions that may be taken for granted because of our seemingly detached significance. However, it is on days like today that we transform into data, bodies of information worthy of attention. We necessitate being listened to. This day, the annual James J. Whalen Academic Symposium is a testament to the tremendous work of our students, faculty, staff, and administration at Ithaca College for listening to the data that imbues this institution with its high standards. Let us endeavor to continue listening and learning from each other and the wealth of data that we bring to our labs, classes, and rehearsals. Thank you for spending your time at the symposium today. At this point, it is my great pleasure to invite the chair of the Wayland Symposium Steering Committee, Yvonne Rogalski, back to the podium so that she may announce the award winners along with her bit. Okay, I know this is why you're all here now. <laughs> um, so, uh, Rumit Singh is gonna help, he's gonna announce and I will hand out the awards and I just have to say, having sit in on one of those finalist sessions and then having spoken with just about everyone who was in the unfortunate position of judging, they, unfortunate because it was so, so difficult, right, to make this decision. So um, I do wish we had an award for everyone. It was very, very competitive this year. Um, but do know that even if you didn't complete an award, you, you know, it, you've all done a tremendous, tremendous job and, and you made our, our jobs really difficult. <laughs> um, so, Rumit Singh. And then what we'll do is we'll announce your name and you'll come up and we'll give you an award. And, and I think if you want to take pictures, that would be great too. Awesome. Thank you for hanging around. Uh, I'm sure this is the only reason you came here. Uh, so I'm going to start with the awards. Uh, sorry for butchering anybody's name. You can come to me afterwards and give, beat me, but <laughs> it's handwritten. It's a little difficult to read, plus names are different. Okay. Uh, we'll start with the oral presentation awards for the School of Business. Um, the first award goes to Melinda Carlson. Uh, and the faculty sponsor was Christine Buttel. She's from the management department. Okay. The next award is from the School of Communications, and there's four students. Um, I'm going to try. Do uh, Dominic Recchio, Caitlin Loxon, Caitlin T Tinzak, and... Megan Goldberg. 
to the faculty. The faculty sponsor was Gordon Rowland. Okay. The next award is from the School of Music, and the award goes to Jocelyn Arms, and the faculty sponsor was Keith Kayser. <laughs> from the School of H&S, uh, there's five of them. We'll start with the first, Humanities. Uh, from uh, Communication Studies, it's Jordan Cowell, and the faculty sponsor, Robert Sullivan. Uh, from Art History, it's Michael Risk, and its faculty sponsor, Nancy Brick. Anthropology, the award goes to Co uh, Courtney Leo, and the faculty was Susie Gaze. Uh, last from Humanities is from the Economics Department. Uh, the award is for Noon Tran, and the faculty sponsor is Shane Ostrich. Couple from the sciences. Uh, the first is from biology, Emily Conklin, and the faculty sponsor, Ian Woods. Uh, mathematics, uh, Samuel Lloyd, and. <laughs> the faculty sponsor was Osman Uriki, Urikli, and from. The next award's from physics, Jonathan Smucker, and the faculty sponsor is Bruce Thompson. Okay, the third school. Uh, no, well, the fifth school. School of HSHP. Um, the first award's from, uh, for Hannah Robinson, and the faculty sponsor, Hong Wei Wan, uh, from HPPE. The second awards for Valerie Cohen, uh, the faculty sponsor is Deborah King from ESS. Okay, awards for the visual performance. Uh, the first award goes to McKinlin, McKinley Lair, and the faculty sponsor was Carol Jennings. That was the only award, sorry. Uh, awards for the poster presentation. Uh, for, for the first award from the humanities category, <clears throat> the award goes to Taylor Ford, and the faculty sponsor was Stephen Sweet. <laughs> from the sciences, the award is uh, for Daniel Bugor and Colette Pisecki, uh, with the faculty sponsor, Susan Vedra. Last but not the least, from the School of HSHP, the award goes to Jamie Cronenberg, faculty sponsors Ramit Singh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. We had a lot to celebrate today. Please help yourselves to some refreshments and please keep the conversations about research and creative work alive and ongoing. Thanks.